In the last lesson, you used Xcode to build this. Now in this Xcode tutorial, I want to take a little more time and show you around so that you can understand what you did and begin to master this tool. Now you're going to want to pay close attention because over the course of your journey, you're going to be spending a lot of time inside Xcode, turning your app ideas into reality. Oh, and at the end of the video, I'll be sharing my Xcode tips and tricks with you that I use every day. So make sure you watch till the end. Okay, quick note before we begin back in lesson one, I showed you how to download and install Xcode. So if you haven't done that yet, go ahead and do that first. Once you have Xcode launched, let's get into it. All right, let's create our new project. Click create a new Xcode project right here, or go to file new and project. Now there are several options here, actually they're templates and you can create apps for different platforms, Mac OS, watch OS, TV OS for cars, even multi-platform if you want to launch your app on multiple platforms. However, we are going to choose iOS app and actually look, there's game, AR apps, there's iMessage, sticker packs, ton of stuff. We're going to stick with the basics for now. Um, this is a good starting place. Let's click next. And here, let me explain some of these options for you so they don't look so cryptic. First of all, product name is easy, right? We're just going to put whatever we want to name this app. Now, team is something that I want to explain. Remember back in lesson one when we talked about the process to launch your app into the store? Well, the code from Xcode that gets turned into a code package and then you have to code sign it, as in put your digital signature on it so that people can't impersonate you. And then that's the thing that gets put into the app store. Well, this here is how you're going to code sign it. And to get a team on the drop down here, you actually have to sign up for the Apple developer program, which is that yearly paid program to allow you to submit apps. Uh, it will give you access to a portal where you can upload your digital signature. And that's how um, you're going to be able to create a team in here. But for the purpose of these demos, we can leave it as none. Now, what's more important though, is this bundle identifier, because this is the unique ID for your app. And this has to be unique for all apps on the app store. It's a combination of your product name, as you can see, as well as your organization identifier. And here you can put anything. Typically people do com dot your company name or your personal name. And together that is your bundle identifier. Now the next two pieces, interface and language, I want to draw your attention back to that diagram in lesson one, where we said Swift UI is how you're going to build your user interfaces. Swift is the coding language you're going to use to express your logic. And together, you're going to use those two tools to build your app. And that's essentially what these two things are. There are some options, however, in particular for interface, if you pull this down, you can select storyboard or Swift UI. Uh, Swift UI is definitely a lot easier to learn. And it is the UI framework moving forward because Swift UI is sort of the replacement for storyboards. Um, right now, as of today, there are still companies out there using storyboards, but Apple's full intention is to discontinue that and move forward with Swift UI. So I would definitely recommend learning Swift UI. And if you do choose Swift UI, you have to choose Swift. If you choose storyboard, you can still learn Objective C. But again, I wouldn't start with Objective C unless you had a very, very good reason specifically to do so. Maybe you are trying to target a job that only uses Objective C, and that's what you would pick. But uh, Swift UI and Swift is where we want to be. Now, these two options here, core data and include tests, these are options that you can always add to your app after the fact. So you don't feel pressured that you have to check them here. But even for the purposes of what we're learning, these are unnecessary. So core data is a way to have um, a local database on your device and tests uh, is used in software development where your project gets really big and you need to write automated test cases because once your software gets really large, if you make a change, it's not feasible for you to manually test all the features all over again for every single change that you make. So you need to include automated testing that you can just click a button and run and it'll say pass, fail, pass, fail. And you can see what breaks after you make a change. So again, not for us, leave these unchecked. Let's go ahead and click next. And now you can choose a place to save it. I would recommend if you are taking this seriously and you are going to continue on learning, create a space in your hard drive, uh, a folder perhaps for all of your apps and projects so that they can stay organized. For myself, I'll admit I'm a bit of a messy person and this is a demo. Uh, so I'm just gonna create it on my desktop. Source control, now this, if you don't know what this is, it's kind of like versioning. So imagine being able to take snapshots of your project and code uh, so that later on, if you accidentally break your project and it's not working anymore, you can always roll back 
to one of your snapshots. This is kind of like Time Machine on the Mac if you've ever used that. So definitely a very good practice in software development. In fact, kind of mandatory if you're working uh, professionally. For us right now, we are going to leave this unchecked because I will introduce this to you later on. Okay, let's go ahead and create it and let's check out our brand new project. So here's our brand new project. Before we dive into each of these files and I tell you what they're for, let us talk about the major big areas of Xcode so you can get acquainted. So there are five main areas of Xcode. Firstly, on the left hand side here, you have your navigator area. In the middle, the biggest area, you have your editor area. On the right hand side, this is known as the inspectors or utility area. Across the top, at the top here, you have your toolbar area. And at the bottom, tucked away, is this debug area, which you really only need when you start working with code. So we're going to hide that again. So those are the five major areas of Xcode. Let's dive into each one. And I'll show you in the context of your project what these areas are for. Let's start with the file navigator. So here you have your Xcode project and all of the files in your project. So you see these are collapsible folders. These are the files. These are the asset libraries that uh, you learned about in lesson one. But notice across the top here, there are tabs to the navigators. This first tab is the file navigator or project navigator, but there are different types of navigator. So you will encounter these when we get farther along. Right now, there's not too much to see. I would leave it on this first tab under uh, file navigator, or project navigator, so you can take a look at all of your files. Next, let's move on to the editor area, the biggest area. This is where you're going to be spending most of your time editing your files. Notice that this area changes depending on what you're looking at. This file is a pure code file, so it's all code. This one is a view, so you're going to get half code, you're going to get the preview. And asset library, again, it changes. So the editor area is very versatile. It changes depending on what file you want to edit. Now, inside the editor area, there's also a lot of cool little tucked away things to make editing easier, such as across the top here, you can have tabs, there's a breadcrumb, you can even jump within the file and you can open up, uh, you can split up this editor area into multiple panes, uh, window panes as well, which I'll show you um, closer to the end of this lesson. For now, let's move on to the rightmost side. This is the inspector area. Sometimes people call it the utility area, which um, will work as well. Uh, however, what this is for is it allows you to configure whatever you are working on or looking at inside uh, the editor area. So for example, if we, um, you know, you've seen this, if I put my cursor on one of the view elements here, I would be able to configure it, right? If I put my cursor on this thing called view, there's nothing I can configure with this keyword view. However, if I click across the tabs here, there is a quick help tab. Now this is useful because it tells me what this view keyword means and what it does. Um, here, this tab is the identity tab. It tells me where this file exists, where this content view exists on my hard drive, right? And what app membership does it belong to and things like that. So that's what the inspector area is good for. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but there is a cascading effect going on, right? If I select this, uh, it changes this. If I select something in the editor area, it changes what happens in the inspectors area. So think left to right waterfall. Next up, let's look at the top toolbar. Now, first of all, this leftmost button hides your navigators. If you need more space on your laptop, maybe your screen is kind of small, you can make more space. On the right hand side, there's a similar button to hide the inspectors area. So now you get a full editor area for editing. Uh, there is this run button to run your app inside a simulator like we did in lesson one. And here you can click on the simulator, to select a different one. You can test your app on all sorts of different simulators. Also, if you plug in your uh, device into your computer, you are going to uh, see that device here and you can choose it 
and you can actually launch your app on that device. So that's something we're gonna do in this video series. So don't worry about that, we'll get to that there. Uh, when you first plug in your phone, you're gonna get a pop-up on your phone saying, do you trust this computer? And you're gonna have to say trust um, before you can actually see it on this menu, just in case you, you're doing it right now. Uh, here, it tells you what's happening behind the scenes. Sometimes, you know, if you're saying thinking Xcode is slow, it, it might be because it's doing something behind the scenes. And this is the status bar that tells you what's going on. Now, this uh, Xcode cloud is something that you don't have to worry about yet, but it's a, it's a way for you to be able to run your projects and test, you know, run those test cases that I told you about when we created the project. It's a way to run those test cases on the cloud on Apple's servers. The reason is because sometimes these take quite a while to run. And also, um, you might want to run those tests on multiple different devices. And so you can deploy those things to the cloud and run them there. This icon we've used before, it's the library, right? So if we go back to the content view and you click this plus icon, there's our library. That's so useful. And then, yep. Yeah, we talked about this icon. So that's the toolbar. Now that you know your way around Xcode, let's take a look at your project files. So let's start at the very root of your Xcode project, which is inside your file navigator, this node right here. Now this is where you can configure different things for your project. These are things like what is the version number? What is the display name? Should it be able to display in various orientations and all the things like that? Actually, this is probably pretty important what iOS version should it be uh, able to install on? You might set 16 and nothing lower than that will be able to install your app. And this is for the reason that sometimes you're using features which are only available on, let's say iOS 16. Uh, so that is the root project node. Here is also where you would configure different things like uh, you might have to add different capabilities to your app such as game center or being able to do uh, in-app purchases or notifications or things like that you have to add different things and just in general there's a whole ton of settings this is your project settings now th after that there is a folder inside contains a couple more files you've got uh, this entry point this is uh, where your app starts okay, this is the first thing that gets executed before it launches the first screen of your app. And that is what this is, content view. If we click onto the next file, that is content view. You can see here, this is what it looks like. And uh, the entry point, if you click back here, you can see that it creates a content view. So that makes sense, right? This is the entry point for your app. When the app launches, it creates this screen, content view, which is what you see here. And in fact, when you launch it in the simulator, this is the first screen that you see. So hopefully that makes a lot of sense. And next you have your asset library, which stores all of your colors, your image assets, and even this is where you'd specify your app icon. You just uh, place an image into here to have that be your app icon. And then inside preview content is another asset library, but this is just only specifically for the previews here that you see. So if you perhaps, you know, sometimes previewing doesn't make sense if there's no data to preview, right? Like, for example, if you've got a scrollable li list of photos, but you don't have any actual photos, there's nothing really to see, right? So this is where you would put those test or preview assets to be used. And that, in a nutshell, are all of your files in your Xcode project. Next up, let's see how we can test our app. Now, in terms of testing your app, we mentioned the simulator in lesson one. So just as a recap, you can select a simulator of your choice here, and then you can hit this run button and it's gonna launch an on-screen virtual device. If this is the first time you're doing it, expect a couple of minutes for this to boot up. But here, this is a great way to test your app. You can click through all the screens and interact with it. You can simulate different device features such as uh, low memory situations or low network situations to see how your app would behave. And in general, just test your app. This preview here in the editor area is actually great for seeing how your screen looks like as you build it. And there are a couple of tools for that. For example, there are zooming capabilities here. You can zoom in, zoom out, zoom to fit, and zoom to 100%. That's what these different buttons do. You can also 
look at variations. For example, I can look at what dark mode would look like on my phone, or I could look uh, at landscape orientation. If this is too tedious, you can look at multiple variations at once by clicking this button right here. And uh, for example, I can click color scheme and that's going to show me light and dark. I can click on orientation, for example, or maybe dynamic type and see how different font sizes look on the UI. And then finally, we have these two different modes. By default, it's on this live mode, which lets you interact with the elements on your preview. For example, I may add a button. Let's open up the library under views. Um, search for button, you'll see it there. And click and drag it, and you'll see a button. You can see by default, I'm on live mode down here, and I can interact with this. There is another mode called selectable mode or select mode, and it allows you just simply to select your elements. Perhaps you want to see the corresponding code for that element. So that's a great way to learn. Um, another functionality is selecting an element so that you can um, configure it in the inspector area. That's pretty helpful as well. And now I want to leave you with some Xcode tips that I use every single day inside Xcode. These are so useful and it may not be apparent right now, but as you start, well, as we start building the app in this video series, you're going to see us using these. So the first one, probably the most basic one is this one here. These go back and go forward arrows. These work just like your web browser arrows. And sometimes let's say you're moving from this file to this file to another file here and there these buttons just let you jump back to the place you were in. So when you're working with code, sometimes it, the, the code file gets really long and this breadcrumb right here allows you to jump between different sections in your file, which is really handy. Here you can actually jump to different files as well, clicking this breadcrumb right here. On the uh, upper right hand corner here, there are a few useful things as well. So this middle icon allows you to customize how the editor looks. So if you choose show editor only, you're, you don't need the preview, perhaps you can click that, right? Uh, you can also, there's this mini map, which is quite useful as well, which lets you uh, scrub your file. So if your file was very, very long, this would be an easy way to just sort of navigate and you can see at a glance uh, what your file is looking like. Uh, if you want to, let's say, look at two files side by side, you could do that by clicking this upper right hand corner button uh, and opening two editors side by side. And obviously, the more screen real estate that you have, the more useful this becomes. Um, as for now, it is probably not very useful for me. Um, with the size of this Xcode window and with the size of the font that I have right here. But nonetheless, you know that this is available to you. And there are different tabs right here, as you can see here. Now, as you code more, you'll undoubtedly run into a situation where you're wondering what else can the VStack do? Or can the VStack do this or that? So I'm happy to say that documentation is embedded right into Xcode. Now you can just Google VStack and find it or there are a couple of fast ways to do that with an Xcode. So one way is going to Windows Developer Documentation, and you can just search up VStack in here. Uh, I've already found it, but yeah, you can do that. You can look at what it can do, uh, how to use it, and things like that. An easier way, even faster, is just put, putting your cursor over it and using the inspector panel and going over to this Quick Help section. And then you can even click on the link here to open it to that page even faster. If you want to hold down the option or alt key on your keyboard, hover over VStack and you can get a pop up dialogue for that. Again, there's a link to open the developer documentation, really handy stuff. All right, so now you know all about the file navigator, the editor area, the inspector area, the toolbar and the debug area. And you know how to start your own Xcode project and what each of the files in your project is for. In the next lesson, we're going to get hands on again, and you're going to learn even more skills for building user interfaces, aka the screens of our app. Click on over here to go to the next lesson, and I'll see you there.